I'm here in Sandy Springs, Georgia, in the northern portion of the Atlanta metropolitan area where Mercedes-Benz at their headquarters are getting ready to debut their first North American EV charging hub with the um, attached lounge. This is going to be a nationwide network of DC fast chargers and as you can see they're uh, preparing the PR event for the press. It's a private event so I'm not going to be allowed to be in there. Uh, the chargers will be open after the event so i'll try to swing by and actually uh, get some video of the chargers but here at the north american headquarters the vibe is excitement getting ready to debut a brand new nationwide dc fast charging network So there's going to be 500 of these charging hubs in North America eventually by 2030. They're said to complete 100 of them just in 2024. They partnered with Simon Malls in order to install 55 of them and Bucky's, the very popular convenience store gas station on interstates, to install 30 of them. And conceivably, uh, several of these are already under construction at Bucky's along interstates. The press release they put out indicated that progress was being made. Very distinctive canopies, multiple uh, charge point uh, express plus dispensers, and they're being billed as being able to dispense 400 kilowatts. We'll take a closer look after the event is over. So Mercedes as a company has adopted the North American charging standard, similar to other OEMs, which will open up the Tesla supercharger network to Mercedes owners. Mercedes is also participating in the uh, currently unnamed seven company consortium in order to uh, deploy DC fast charging stations throughout the uh, United States as kind of a counter to the uh, Tesla supercharger network. However, these, are actually outside of those two initiatives. So there's the Tesla Supercharger Network, which is opening up to Mercedes-Benz customers. There's also the unnamed seven company consortium, but the Mercedes-Benz Charging Hub is in addition to that. And there's so many DC fast charging networks that are coming online nowadays. It feels like utter bedlam. There's the unnamed uh, seven company consortium. There's this one. There's a Pilot Flying J initiative. There's the native EVgo. Uh, General Motors and Ford are both building out DC fast chargers at their uh, dealerships through franchise agreement uh, regulations. And um, Electrify America is doing an expansion. There's Nevi funds. Uh, there's just, it feels like there's an incredible amount of DC fast chargers that are coming online really quick. By the way, the initiative by Mercedes-Benz for the charging hubs are Nevi compliant. So they'll be able to receive the funds uh, from the federal government under the Inflation Reduction Act, along with all the other people. And perhaps that's what we're seeing is a big land grab because of the uh, money coming from the federal government in the United States. And uh, free money definitely catches the interest of entrepreneurs and uh, capitalists alike. So I, I'm in favor of all of it. <laughs> the more DC fast chargers, the better. And, Definitely, this is a classy act right here. Open and just, I'm not sure if I made it clear, these charging hubs are not just for Mercedes-Benz owners. These are open to any EV person who has an electric car that needs a charge. Here's the bathrooms. They're designed to be unisex. There's two of them. What you get in is there's a little keypad thing on the outside. You wave your hand, 
door unlocks and then once you get inside uh, you can lock the door very spacious for community bathroom nice design vibe they got going in here and uh, most importantly available because I can't tell you how many times I've been at a supercharger that is a uh, shopping mall of some kind that's closed because it's a Sunday morning or whatever. So very nice to have a, a facility attached to the charging station. Here's the lounge. It's got vending machines, places to sit, floor to ceiling, windows, coffee machine, and protection from the environments in order to kick back and relax while your car is charging. All right, so I was very fortunate because while I was waiting for the PR crew to do their breakdown, Kyle Connor actually dropped a video of this site where he spelled out in immaculate detail the technical specifications of it. And I'm gonna link that video down below in the description. And also put a picture in picture here for the um, uh, inside this video for your enjoyment that spells out those details. Uh, you'll notice as I pull into the stall, the lights above me and the canopy are going to light up just for this stall, provide a little additional efficiency for the station. It is awfully thoughtful. There they go. Backing on up. Now, in order to actually initiate this charge, I'm going to need to stop the video because I need my telephone. Because I have an EVgo RFID card, but I do not have a charge point RFID card. Okay, so it wants me to authorize the payment first. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, so my car is charging on one of the dual handle dispensers, which is fed by two power bricks, offering 400 kilowatts if one car is connected, 200 kilowatts if two cars. Let me think about this for a second. Yes, because each power brick offers uh, 200 kilowatts. Combination of the two would be 400. You can see they're not wrapped. There's actually a distinctive Mercedes emblem adhered to it with adhesive. So these don't actually have wraps. They do have air cool. I'm going to bring a close-up of that. Uh, here in a second, there's an um, ambient cooling system for the cables in order to increase the amperage on them. Um, very crisp and clean implementation, if I do say so myself. On either end are single-handled dispensers, which are paired together according to Kyle's video. Um, reason being is one is for uh, disabled access, the other one is for pull-through access. Now, the thought is that not every site is going to have a canopy, but if you think about the Pilot Flying J, right now they're trending to only about a third of their locations having canopies. has a lot to do with the um, site engineering, whether or not there's actually space for it or not, um, and whether or not you're going to um, see it as a long-term investment if you own the property, things like that. And you'll notice right up here, not only is there a light on the charger, but there's also a light on this uh, canopy column, which indicates my current state of charge and the fact that this charging stall is in use. Uh, so it's blue. Uh, apparently, according to the interview um, with the person who's the uh, lead for the North American initiative for electrification DC fast charging with Mercedes-Benz, that was supposed to be similar to the iconic Electrify America green lights that kind of direct you where they are in the Walmart parking lot when you're trying to find them in the middle of the night. You just look for the iconic green thing. And uh, these uh, pillar lights are similar in um, uh, function. I don't know if there's additional stuff to talk about the chargers. Again, I'm going to get a close-up of the um, cooling modules on the back, which you could probably hear a little bit through the microphone. Uh, plenty of space. This station is now open, and I can say that although Kyle was the first person who was a non-Mercedes employee to charge at this location, he had preferential treatment as a result of being a VIP. 
I was relegated to sidewalk access. So I'm actually the first uh, general population person to hit this station. I know that because I was kind of camped out waiting to go home, looking for them to drop the um, barriers blocking the access into here. And they just did a little bit ago. I came in, the, uh, the uh, crew was still in the process of breaking down and I'm the first car in. Regardless, this is really exciting times. <laughs> I can't tell you how exciting this is. I took the day off of work. I drove from Charlotte, North Carolina here to Atlanta in order to participate because I had a suspicion the event was going to occur. Not only did the event occur, but I got good video, uh, even though I wasn't an attendee because the uh, sidewalk was very close to where the uh, charging station is. I also got to cross paths with Kyle Connor, which I can't tell you how many videos I watch. And uh, the man is a titan for EV adoption. I uh, really respect the man for his efforts. Um, you could say that he's a baller YouTuber who's in it for the fame and fortune. I disagree. I think the man's motives are rightly placed. He has uh, grown the Autospec brand in order to uh, facilitate um, information dissemination for EV adoption is my personal opinion. Uh, that's the man's mission and he is very driven in that cause. So here we are, we're gonna close up. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.